I should want to ask you, Calvin Ridley wasn't, at least I don't believe I saw him at all. What's going on with him? Is that an injury situation? Is that, are you trying to work him in a different area at this point? What's going on with, with Ridley? Yeah, we've got a few guys that, like we were talking about yesterday, that are different uh, phases of our off-season program. Really, the, obviously, the entire objective here is to get these guys, make sure they're in the best shape going into training camp and ready to roll, ultimately, obviously, for the regular season in somebody like Calvin Spot. So we got different guys uh, working through different things. Michael, but he, he's been great. Uh, you know, we do a lot of walkthroughs and stuff and whatever we can, uh, mobile classroom, and Calvin's been great. So in this type of minicamp environment, obviously, you no know, pads, is, is this almost more of a Matt Ryan to get familiar with Kyle Pitts and some of the other guys who he hasn't played with more than, say, Ridley or or even, you know, I mean, no Hayden Hurst is out there, but, like, you're going to Hayden Hurst. Not necessarily. I mean, it just, I guess, it, you know, it's you're dealing with a real situation that could happen during the season. Guys are up, down, different things happen. And so our mentality is is when you have competition, we, we got a little speed work in the past game, and he's got to get used to throwing to everybody. And, and so, like I said, some weeks, depends who's going to be up, who's down. Uh, what the circumstances are, and we got to be able to adapt. Uh, you know, just, you only work the same two guys over and over again. Uh, you know, you, well, maybe you get lucky, and now you're playing a 17-game season. It's probably not going to work out that way. So he's got to be familiar with throwing to, to everybody, and he you know, like good competition. Guys doing well. I don't care. I told uh, Dave Brock, Justin Peel, Des Kitchens, whoever, put put the guys in that you think that you know reward them, and that's how you have true competition. So, go Jeff Schultz. Arthur, you sort of touched on this a little bit yesterday, but I'm just wondering of all the mini camps that you've been involved with in the past, how much, I mean, what are you really look, looking to get accomplished and how much can you really sort of set a tone before training camp in, in a three day camp like this? Yeah, Jeff, I think, you know, as I said, it's, it's hard because the mini camps have passed. They, they used to be used differently. Obviously we needed it. We wanted to get the guys in on the physical. We're staying with our OTA mode. And, and like our objective, because it's year one, you know, putting our schemes in was big for us, trying to mentally tax these guys and, and, and team settings, get them to communicate, let them get familiar with the staff, you know, building trust both ways, uh, player to coach, coach to player. And, and, and you do, then there's not so much unknown to come back. They know what your standards are at practice, what's acceptable, what isn't. And, and we understand too, that you're not in the real, we're not doing any team run, we're not in the pads. So there's a lot of things that aren't what I call real football, but it's just part of the learning process as we build up. To the training and, camp. And, okay, thanks. And, and again, I'm, I'm, I know you just answered this a minute ago to Michael, but there was some background noise. Did you say Calvin is not injured and he's just doing what you want him to do, or is he getting over something? Here's, or you Here's the best way to put this, Jeff, because everybody's got different things they're dealing with in the off season, whether it's something from last season, something in the off season, like, I'm just not like we don't have to give the injury report right now. And I'm not being coy. It's just guys are at different phases in the offseason. The objective is to make sure everybody is healthy as they can be going into training camp. Do you Yeah, coach, I helped to write the injury report in Rue. So we, we know you don't have to give a report, but um, did he have a offseason surgery that he's recovering from? Hey, do let again? And thanks, thanks for writing those rules because then. As you know, I don't have to answer whether I had an all-season surgery or you had all-season surgery or Bassity. Again, guys are in different spots. You know, we got to get make sure everybody's healthy. We we have a new training staff in here. We have a new weight room staff, and we're trying to make sure that these guys are ready to go. With some guys have different things lingering. I don't want soft tissue injuries and guys going into the summer hurt and having a setback. So, like I said, we got about six guys in a different phase of the off-season program, and they're all dealing with different things. But we. We do what we think is the best interest of really the player, player's health and the health of this team. So does that answer your question, d -Led? Um, I'm not really, but uh, that's okay. I just had to waste one of my football on the injuries. I want to know about it up. That's yesterday. a big time flex there. They say you're old enough. It reminds me when I was with Dick LeBeau and they came in, the officials came in for a rule meeting and he referenced something in 1960. So I appreciate <laughs> that, d -Led. Yeah. But I, I'm sorry I had to waste one of my questions on that. But um, yesterday you talked about – I wanted to discuss – you You brought up the backup swing tackle a couple times, and that's always exciting for me. And I wanted oh, yeah. to ask about the defense, uh, how, how that's coming together. You got a lot of tackles there, so that's going to be important. Oh, yeah. That's an important you, spot. Bro. Hey, you saw Mayfield out there, right? 
Did you do your job yesterday? Did you see Mayfield out there? You yes, thought I, I did. Was, I told you, you just you just penciled him in at left guard. I told you he played multiple spots. You didn't want to believe me a couple uh, a month ago, whenever that was. Well, Alex Gibbs moved Claybo from right tackle to, to guard too, so you know I'm I'm flexible when when you got to so, make a check on me. Yeah, so are we, but in, uh, no, I appreciate that. But in all seriousness, we're, defense, this guy's come along, a lot of good communication. You said we're getting a lot of individual development down there with Gary and uh, Ted, and then we go to these team settings. You know, as we're putting in our schemes, there's been good communication, and it's, it's going to be hard to be led to evaluate them. Maybe get some good evaluation and with the uh, joint practices. Be good for you there. So uh, looking forward really to training camp, especially with the interior guys. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Allison? This might be a little bit of a basic question, but without like preseason games, how are you able to evaluate or test these the rookies and the guys that they are actually picking up the playbook and things like that in, in this mini camp? Sure. Uh, Allison, there's multiple ways, uh, you know, with obviously with the rules being what they are. I mean, it's not – so much of a physical evaluation, as you, as you talked about, it's mentally. It's it's building them up in team settings, the way we install plays, whether we've done virtually, get them out for walkthroughs, obviously get them out in team settings and what we're doing out there on the field in OTAs, trying to really mentally tax them. And that's the only way to do it right now, being smart when you're not trying to, uh, you know, playing within the rules, not doing anything uh, stupid inside with the big guys. Are you using this almost kind of like as a, an evaluation period for yourself, getting ready for training camp? You keep talking about training camp. So what are you learning that has really worked for you so far? And maybe some things that you're like, eh, I'll adjust this when it comes to training camp or look back at what I did to make, make adjustments. Yeah. No, I think, uh, another good question. So after this is over, I think whether it's year one, year two, um, hopefully going a long run here, but you're looking, hey, what can you do better? So we evaluate our offseason program. It, this made sense for us right now because we're in year one. And obviously, all the other things we're dealing with, you're, you know, you're still dealing with coming out of a pandemic. And as we're dealing with that, so the rules are a little bit different. Obviously, the, what was going on with the players and their approach to it. And so, you know, we're dealing with the rules as they are. Um, but that's a constant evaluation. And as we get into training, you got to understand what the objective is. This is a build up. I mean, it's never like, hey, it's not college football when you're a different parts of your program and you're, you're coming in and getting ready for a spring game. And, you, and maybe that's a little outdated. I've been working in college football 10 years. But understand what the big picture objective is, is getting ready for camp. We're using things right now. now where they're familiar to us and we're familiar with them so we can get ahead as we start training camp. So we're not far behind. It's not the first time they've heard us install a play. Denitra. Morning, Coach. You kind of answered part of this question on the O-line when you were talking about Jalen Mayfield. So just a quick follow-up. Um, what are your initial impressions, especially as you're going through uh, day two of um, – mini camp, particularly with Drew Dalman or even Matt Hennessy in that competition across center and at O-line? Yeah, so obviously just since we started this off-season program, it's kind of a continuation of that. Um, and that's, it's again, we're all dealing with this. The way we're using our mini camp is really an extension of our OTA. So this is, a, this is another install and a step in that direction. But everything we've asked Matt to do and Drew, obviously uh, did a lot of work on Drew. We're happy with his progress. Uh, you know, he's, he's a smart football player and has nothing to do just because he went to Stanford. Uh, not finding those narratives, but Drew in his own right, he's, he's done a nice job. And so was Matt. And the competition is good for us all. Um, really pleased with the, with what uh, Coach Ledford is doing with that group. You can still, as I said, you, you got to set your own culture in that room as they're, as they're building that. So very happy with the progress, what's going on over there. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Alex Glaze. Hey, Arthur, just curious, uh, you know, now that the Julio situation is, is over, just have you seen or heard uh, anything from the guys about uh, Calvin stepping up in, into that leadership role um, and taking over kind of that, that receiver room now? Well, look, you know, Alex, we're looking for leaders, and they come in all different shapes and sizes and all different personalities. That, that fixed mindset is just because you so a, a C on somebody's jersey that they got to act a certain way, and that's, that's ridiculous. Because, like I said, it's some of the best leaders I've been around. You know, the guys that do it in their own style. Some guys, they, they, you know, they, they're very verbal. And you can hear them all through practice. And other guys, they do it with their actions. And there's other guys that can do it, and they have influence behind the scenes. And that's a, not a knock on anybody. That's just kind of our leadership. I, I, I've never asked somebody to be somebody that they aren't. Because then I, they, 
like you guys know, you can tell when somebody's fake. So be yourself. It naturally happens. And we got a lot of really quality veterans and, and good leaders on this team. And just to kind of follow up on Calvin a little bit, I know you, you know, answered this the, the same way probably four different times today already. But uh, is he going to is he going to be out there today? And um, is there any concern on your end that he will not be ready to go for for camp? Look, there's there's concern with all our players. I mean, you just hope over the summer, uh, you know, like I said, you can go to D Led for the uh, reference here for the historical references here. But you know, you just hope that your everybody stays safe over the summer. Things, things pop up. You hope it's nobody on your team. And uh, but yeah, I mean the, the whole the whole process and guys that are dealing with their th- different things. We're just trying to get them ready so we're as healthy as we can be to start camp. That's all our players. Time for a few follow-ups, Michael. You muted, Mike. I'm struggling with my phone there. There we go. Hey, are there? So I want to get back to the leadership thing for a second. For you, what do you feel is the best? What's the best leader that you work with, that you jive with? Because obviously personalities, you know, mesh or don't mesh. Like for you, what's the best type of leader that you think you work with? Like I said, I, I, I like to think that I'm flexible. I understand it's not one size fits all. Uh, you know, I go back to, you know, I was fortunate enough to be around London Fletcher early when I was in Washington. Uh, he was probably one of the better leaders I've been around. Um Different, you know, different guys at different styles. You know, Delaney Walker had his own style. Uh, you know, so been fortunate to have been around some pretty good leaders. Um, and so I can, I feel like I'm flexible. I can mesh with just about any any style. Like the same thing is like you don't get in comparisons. Like Ryan Tannehill is different, very different. Not Ryan. I wouldn't compare both of them. They're their own guy. So that's probably the best way I can answer that for you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of an offbeat question. You never had to do daily press conferences before. So I'm curious who you learned from about what to say and what not to say, because it seems like you've excelled quickly. Well, I appreciate that, Jeff. You know, I just try to like I just try to study history. I've been around a lot of good coaches. I was a huge sports fan growing up. Um, so watch a lot of different coaches in a lot of different uh, fields. And so just you know, try to be myself and just learn from from everybody. Yeah, got time for one more. D-Led. Yeah, Coach, how did you come up with the laps and the push-ups for the accountability penalties that uh, that, that means um, talked about? Uh, you know, I know uh, when I was coaching, we used to do up-downs. What year was that, 1944? Right now, 2010 uh, to 19. Okay. 2004, yeah. I didn't know. You could have you run a, a Junction Boys-style camp. Did you get water? I didn't know what, what area you're talking about. But uh, in all seriousness, though, D-Led, uh, you know, we just try to get creative, like you said, we're with the rules that we've got out here, and we're trying to, you know, guys be accountable, and accountable, excuse me, be disciplined, and so we just kind of come up with creative ways. We'll use different different methods as we go through camp, 